Welcome to My Forever Home, the podcast. I'm Frances Cosway and I've helped hundreds of people create forever homes. I can't wait to share the journey with you. So let's start. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the My Forever Home podcast, the sustainable living and home season. Um, Today, we're going to talk about tapware. And I really wanted to, you know, as we've been going through the season, we've been talking about lots of different things with regards to sustainability. And I've had a lot of guests on from different industries and uh, manufacturers. And today, I want to talk about Australian made taps. So, so far, we've touched on many, many different products for our listeners to look into when they have sustainable objectives with their home. But this episode is about tap brand sustainability in the manufacturing of tapware and very proudly in Australia. So today I welcome Tim Tim Sellers um, from Fawcett Stroman, an Australian family business producing tapware in Victoria. So Tim has worked um, for Fawcett Stroman uh, since finishing his schooling and studies and he started at the grassroots and he's moved his way up. He started in assembly of tapware and then moved into warehousing and dispatch to round out his knowledge on how the product flow works. He did a stint in custom machining and the coating side of the business for two years and then moved into marketing and sales, which gave him a well-rounded view of the business as a whole. And he now assists architect and designers, us, uh, with their specification requirements. So he has done absolutely everything within the business to really understand the manufacturing of tapware. So welcome to the show, Tim. Uh, thanks Hello. a lot for having me on. This is so good. Love it. You're welcome. It's so good to have you. And it's, uh, you know, you, as you know, we've been specifying your taps for quite some time. Sometimes our clients know about um, Fawcett Strom and sometimes they don't. So it's really good to have you on the show today. And I particularly love, of course, uh, that you are an Australian-made family business, which is always something that we uh, love to promote. So reading the credentials, you know, on your website, you've got lots and lots of credentials about what you're doing as a business. And we love the fact that you're moving into um, all sorts of new territory that's to come. And we'll talk about that a little bit on the show. So obviously, a supplier can be environmentally focused with their production, with um, Fawcett Stroman, uh, they are doing that with the use of their solar panels, with recycled water, and also your plant a tree program. But tell me, what should listeners be looking for when they are wanting to choose tapware that is a sustainable choice? Because you walk into any sort of showroom and they're like, well, how am I even going to know what's sustainable? So how how can um, our listeners choose a tapware that is a sustainable choice when that's one of their objectives? Yeah, that's a really, really great point to start on, I think. Um, and it's not easy, as you pointed out, to, to know as you walk in um, to check out the ranges of what's on offer. It's quite a crowded market. But I, I honestly believe that if you look for the Australian made tag, um, they've they've got that, that backbone as a business. Um, it's made in this country, which means that the sustainability loop is very, very tight. So that the the parts are made here and they're sold here, so they're not an imported product. That's probably the biggest one I would I would look for first. Um, in our case, we make um, all of our products under one roof, so we're moving our parts around on trolleys rather than planes and ships. So that's that's I think a bit of the background on the Australian made tag and what to look for there. The quality of the, of the goods um, definitely look at the quality of the of the product that you're wanting to buy. Um, now the reason why that's important is that you buy it once and you buy it right. So you're not going yeah. back to buy a tap later on and then you, you're pretty much doubling up on the materials you use. So buy it once, buy it right, and it'll last you for hopefully ever. <laughs> um, yeah. And then that, that there is, is a big sustainability point um, so when, you, when you're making that choice. And then also choose the, I, I would say, choose the brands that you you, you may ask a plumber or whatever, but which brand has a really good backup service that's not just going to, you know, replace a product with a brand new product, but how can they service that product rather than, you know, just replacing products and scrapping what's old? So mm. that's, I think that's a pretty good um, um, thing to, things to look out for. I think you've touched on so many interesting points there. I think the first one that not only is it Australian made, which is just such a, 
a win-win for everyone in this country when you're buying Australian made. But if I understand correctly what you're saying then, that means that um, because the Australian made product, well, the Australian made product has naturally then got a sustainability uh, focus with it, yeah. um, with the tap manufacturers that are made in Australia. Is that correct? Yeah, so they do cover off on, on what you actually do to get that accreditation, what you actually do in-house. Yeah. Um, but I think I think it goes further than that. Do do the research by talking to, you know, subject matter experts, it could be a plumber or a specifier, and see what they what they actually recommend because they've also got their touch points in the industry and they've done their own research. So utilizing um, everything that's available to you when you before you make that choice. Because it is yeah. a big not only a financial choice, but you want to make the right decision for everything. And mm. do it right by doing your research. That's that's the biggest thing. And, and I think, and I mean, it's interesting that you say that because we talk to our um, clients a lot. We're doing the research for them and then passing that information on to them. But I suppose if people are not working with designers, they need to do that research themselves and find that information out themselves, which might be a bit more time consuming. But the other thing that I really wanted to touch on, and I think that's such a critical point, is buy it once and buy it right and then you're not having to replace it again Definitely. and all that energy that's being used to make another product that you're going to replace. And I actually call it, it's not quite in the same league as what we're talking about here, but I call it fast fashion interiors and it sort of goes around the oh. furniture idea, which people have heard me talk about in this season already, that if you're going to save up and buy a product once, it's going to last you 40, 50 years, a piece of furniture or something. But if you equate that to what you've just said as well, taps are the same, that if you're going to buy a cheaper tap that's not as good quality that needs to be replaced in five or 10 years, all that wasted energy and it's just going to go to landfill and is highly unlikely to be recycled. And that is not adding to our environmentally friendly, sustainable objective by just going down that path. So that's exactly. such a great story that just out of that comment of you, you saying buy it once, buy it right. You also have a really high um, a high warranty, though, in terms of the number of years that you warranty a product because you're such a strong believer in the product that you're producing. Is that right? That is. That's bang on. So we've got a 40-year warranty on the product itself. So down to the 40. valve. 40, 4 zero, yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just wanted to make sure listeners heard that because it almost sounded like four but no. that's 40 years, which is huge. That's le that's industry leading, I believe. Yes, it is industry leading. Um, we've also covered the colour finish of the tap. So traditionally, you'd buy a tap um, in a, in a chrome-based finish, which is sort of a general purchase. But nowadays, you've got, you know, 20 finishes to choose from. And each finish, we have warranted for that 40 years as well. We believe in it because we do it all in-house. We know what yes. goes into the product, how it's applied, all of these technologies like DMF, et cetera. Um, we know that the product's going to last and we will back it. And we're not mm. just going to replace it. We're, we're going to you know, try and fix the product if it goes wrong rather than just replace it as we touched on before. Mm. But it comes, it comes down to, and this may be asked a bit later in the, in the podcast, but it comes down to, the substrate what is the tap made of that is the first thing we ask ourselves so we use ultra brass which is mm -hmm. lead free eco brass it is the highest quality brass you can get and then from so that, just stop one second what makes it what makes it eco brass is that because it's lead free or are there other elements that make it eco brass yeah good question so there's a few elements that go into it um we may get into it in a bit more detail later on but it's heavy metals oh, free. Let's let's cover it now. We're on it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So it's heavy metals free. So it doesn't have any bismuth or lead or those type of metals in it. So it's it's easy to recycle is where the eco comes from. Um, it's very easy to recycle. It takes a lot less energy than a, like a traditional stainless steel or a steel-based product. Um, a lot less energy to recycle. It's very clean material. Um, hard material so you can make your tap smaller while still being stronger because you can use less material so that's a win um, but it all stems from that what we call the backbone or the dna of what we offer is the best quality the tap is the first thing and then you can apply the finishes on top of a good foundation if your foundation is shaky you will never build a tower so that's what 
we're big on um, is make sure that the product that even that you don't see is the best it can be to offer that warranty. And and that's, you know, it's the internals. It's the structure of the tap. As you say, you know, you can add a lever to it and all those sorts of things. And But when taps break, it's not really the, the lever that's breaking. It's the internal component and the, the structure of the internals of that tap that break. And so if they're made of a really good quality hard material, they're less likely to break, particularly if you've got a warranty of 40 years on those components anyway. Anyway, yeah, yeah, so yeah, to your point, you, you can't create, a, you can make a beautiful looking tap, but if the structure of it internally is not great, it's not going to stand the test of time. Exactly, yep. No, that's what we And on. then you also, though, recycle all the brass from what I understand. So all the offcuts of the brass that you're talking about, it's not just that you're making it out of a really good eco brass, that those materials are then any offcuts are then recycled as well. So that's that closed loop um, pr production that you're talking about too. Definitely. So we are <clears throat> big believers on that. So our brass that we get in bars and, and um, tubes are made from a high content of recycled brass anyway. So when we manufacture or say we turn mill or tube bend a product, which is the sort of the pillars of our manufacturing, um, out of that comes waste. Um, we don't call it waste. We see it as a sort of gold. <laughs> um, so it's, mm. it's leftover brass material that's turned out or milled out of the inside of a component. All of that swarf is cleaned. So the grease is cleaned off it. And then that is then traded in or sold back and we rebuy that in bars and tubes again. So we don't waste a single thing. We believe that the brass gives us such a, a uh, sort of a step up that we've got to give it back. And um, you keep that cycle going. Um, not only is it, um... oh, we'll cut that bit out. So what I love about what you mentioned, Tim, is around the waste management, that you don't even talk about it as being waste internally, which shows that the, the whole mindset of the business is around, well, here's some leftover components or pieces that have come off what we're producing. We're not even calling it waste because we know it's going to be recycled. So for me, that's just all, just indicating the whole mindset of how the business is structured around recycling sustainability um, which, which is just such an awesome thing you mentioned a bit earlier also around the finishes and I mean you have such a incredible range of different types of finishes um, every possible color and finish you can think of which is fantastic just for the listeners at home because this is really moving quite rapidly in the market around powder coating, electroplated, and then PVD. Can you just explain the differences between electroplating and PVD so that people understand what the difference is and why you would choose one over the other? Yeah, so that's a great, that's a great question. There's so many different families of finishes out there. There's even organics exactly. as well, which I may touch on as well in a little bit of detail, just to add on to Go that. Go for it. But powder coating is... Um, essentially a powderized paint um, that is applied to the substrate, normally a raw brass. Um, there's different powder coats. There's powder coat and powder coat. <laughs> so there's a like lot with most things. Yes, yes, you can you can always pick the good quality ones. But it comes down to um, a powderized um, paint being applied to a product, and then mm -hmm. that then is put into a bake oven, normally, and then it is the powder is melted. And it becomes a coating on on the top of the the tap, so that's done in component format before it's assembled. Um, that is forms like a plastic sort of layer around the around mm -hmm. the part. Heavy polyester content nowadays in powder coatings. Um, Electroplating is involves um, metals being deposited one on top of the other. So, for instance, you'll start off with a polished brass component underneath. The chrome and then that'll be um, they'll have a nickel layer applied to it and it's positive and negatively charged parts and the metal is attracted the little layers of the metal are attracted to the part and deposit on the surface so again it's a coating so it's on top and then nickel goes first and then chrome goes on top of the nickel just for bonding and longevity 
Um, again, there's a lot of different quality um, versions of chrome, should we say, mm. um, and different thicknesses, but not to get into too much detail. Um, and then there's the new technology with, which a lot of people are talking about, which is PVD, which involves um, a vacuum-based process and, again, positively and negatively charged metals. Um, these metals are normally would be vaporised under high electricity. And then those um, metal vapors would impregnate into the actual parts of the tap. So that would have to go on the top. The core difference is PVD is actually impregnating and going through the product, through the metals, rather than sitting on top. And that's what makes it a lot more durable. Yeah. Now, again, there's um, different versions of PVD again. Yes. But um, it will always happen um, on top of a chrome-based substrate. So you've got to get the electroplating done before you, op you offer a PVD top coat. Um, but PVD generally, um, if it's done right, can be quite durable. Um, we've got DMF, which is a step up again. It's, it's an advance on traditional PVD-based process. What was and the acronym was, again? DMF. Um, DMF, which is direct yep. molecular fusion. So it goes beyond PVD. Um, we are the only ones to offer it in this country. We've designed this system um, along with engineers and doctors from Italy and Germany. Um, it is highly durable, hence the reason we can offer a 40 year warranty on the finish. But what it offers um, is, is an advance on PVD. So it does impregnate um, vapored metals, vaporized metal into a substrate, but the whole cleaning system and operation around the, the core um, core steps, should we say, is vastly um, improved. And I can't go into too much detail on that, but rest assured, um, direct molecular fusion, we call it Xernium, um, is, is the future, we believe. And we have offered a 40 year warranty, which is industry leading on that, but hopefully that rounds out the coated type finishes. Mm. Then there's organic. So I suppose if you really want the most durable finish, and especially when we're talking about these really spectacular finishes that are available too, you want them to last. It's the DMF. Um, PVD is, is becoming more and more prevalent in the market. I mean, it was a few yeah. years ago that it was still quite exclusive, but now more and more um, manufacturers are using it. But my understanding is that, and I think you touched on that as well, there's really good quality PVD and then there is, you know, PVD that's not as durable. And I suppose, yeah. again, it would come down to the warranty. So when listeners are looking for, you know, they want the superior go for DMF, but if you're looking at PVD, if you've got a company that's prepared to warrant it for a long period of time, they're backing their product. Um, yes, just definitely. like you are with your 40 years, you're not going to put a warranty on something that you really don't believe is going to make make the grade, make the cut. Exactly. The warranty should be the promise that people look at. That's a, that's a big right. Um, So maybe a 15-year warranty, maybe 20, maybe 40. Look at it. Look at the fine print. See what it covers, what it doesn't cover. Mm. And just um, call up the manufacturers or ask your plumber or, or somebody else that you trust what they, what they would recommend or how they would read the warranty because there's a lot of fine prints out there um, that are quite it doesn't cover everything and you want to make sure yeah. when you're making getting a warranty for 40 years it does cover everything and um, yeah so we're big on big on that because we know what goes into the materials and into the tap or the products um, we can offer and that, that comes back to what you were saying again that comes back to what you were saying before as well that everything's under one roof so you're able to manage all the little components you trust in in the process and the manufacturing because you are complete you're all under one roof so you can monitor when something and see when something's not quite right and fix it then and there uh, yes. if there's something with the manufacturing process and that's why you're able to offer a warranty like that yes that's right and getting back to the Australian manufacturers um, all of us there's, there's a few of us um, not a big quantity but if they're doing a product and a finish in Australia it's probably going to be good so I think that as an industry choosing that that triangle something that's been proven is is a big point um, because you know that they're standing behind their product and they'll probably have a nice long warranty as well.
Look, I think to be a manufacturer in Australia, you've got to really back your product because the manufacturing industry in Australia is not massive anymore. So if it's made in Australia, people are expecting a good quality product. And it's really beautiful for you to say that the industry as a whole in tap, we're in Australia, and there aren't many of you around that it's going to be a good quality product. You've obviously got a DMF finish that is, is a little bit different to others and you offer a leading warranty. Yeah. Um, but it's good for people to know that if they're looking for what you said before, the triangle, the green triangle, Australian made, you're pretty well covered that it's going to be a good product. Yeah, you can make that decision with with, um, with a good deal of certainty. There, uh, as yeah. I said before, I may have covered it, it's a quite a, a flooded market and there's a lot of, a lot of imported product yeah. Um, from Europe and from Asia, Asian countries. But um, I would honestly make the decision because you're not only buying for the initial investment. This is a big point. You're buying for, okay, what's my plumber going to charge next year to, to swap this product out? Or what's Correct. the install time frame? Or what's the lead time? With, with an Australian product, you are pretty well covered. And, yeah, mm. I think that just rounds out sort of on that point. Well, it, I spoke about it last week that um, on, the, on the last episode that our clients are, are actually asking more for Australian-made product. And I was actually surmising whether that was, um, was it the COVID after effect? Because during COVID, a lot of overseas manufacturers were not able to produce and get into the Australian market. And I think it also made consumers realise that we've got, some manufacturing in Australia, we should be supporting Australian made. And I wondered whether it was the COVID after effect or whether it might be a combination of that and the fact that people are becoming, in my view, a lot more sustainably minded and they want to back Australian made as well because that's obviously then a tighter closed loop circle and we're supporting Australian industry. So I feel that it's a my synopsis is that it's probably a combination of all those things, but we are definitely getting a bigger pull from clients for Australian-made product. It's either exclusively Australian-made, we don't want to have anything that's imported, or yeah. we want to support Australian-made wherever we can. That's so exactly it's, it's, yeah. That's exactly what we found. As soon as COVID struck, everyone was worried, um, and that was the first question. When we picked up the phone from end clients, they would ring in and say, are your products Australian made? That was yeah. the first question. And that it was big before, but it was huge during and after. And I yeah, think and it was supporting the country that you, you, you've got certainty on not only the quality, but the supply. And you can mm. trust an Australian manufacturer. You should be able to. And yeah, great. that backup going forward, you know, if, if something else happens in, in the future, am I still going to be supported on my investment? And so that's, yeah, that's, a, big I, that, that's a big one is being supported. And, and you touched on it right at the start as well. And that was about the service. And I talked about this with, um, with Rob Sinclair from ENS Trading that he won't actually stock product that he's not able to be serviced. Um, it just becomes a headache for the clients. And I think to your point, when it is Australian made, and it's quality, it means you can get it fixed. How many products are out there that it's a disposable product effectively? Uh, it's not meant to be disposable but because it's not good quality. It ends up being disposable, adding to landfill, which is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, but you can't get it fixed. And so it, it, it's like days of yore where you bought a product, you could always get it fixed. Now the manufacturers are building it to break down so that they can then sell it again. And so it's a, a completely different mindset to what you're producing. Yeah, yeah, we're not, um, we've got a service, like an after sales service arm here, which my father actually is still heavily involved in because he loves to know if something goes wrong and things do go wrong, but we've got the spares and we can fix it. And then we can go back to the root cause and say, why did that happen? Mm. Was it an install error? Or was it a product error? Did we leave something out? How can we fix that so it doesn't happen again? Is yeah. A, and then B, going back to your point about fast fashion, we don't want our name on something that is a throwaway item. Like it's got our name on it. It should be the best you can buy. And we're big on that. Um, you, as you said, you're making an investment, but you've got you've got that backup to, to keep going, but it's not, not fast fashion. That's changed. Yeah, yeah. 
And I mean, you talked about your dad, and that's one thing that I love is that it's it's also in a family owned business. So you know, we're touching here on the sustainability things, and but just the fact that it's an Australian family owned business. So, and I think you have actually answered this question about what gives Australian manufacturers an edge over over the items that are produced overseas. I think we've actually. Was there anything else you wanted to to add to that? Yeah, there um, is one I reckon. Um, we, we are very close to the market. So we will come and see, you know, you guys or other specifiers or end clients, showrooms, for instance, and we will figure out or ask them what are they missing from our range to be able to make the selection complete. And being in touch with a local market fast enables us to offer a solution quickly. Mm. So we can pivot on what the market wants. That's a big benefit, I believe, with an Australian manufacturer over against, say, an imported product. Where and I can already, having... yeah, and I can already think of something that you're doing that we have been asking for as designers for <laughs> a while. But and this really proves, and you know, when you are in the studio, you do ask, "What are you missing? What can we do?" And so I, I'll, I know it's coming very soon. Is to have all the additional componentry in the same finish as the tapware, and it is. It actually affects what we as designers specify because we need the, you know, if you're having a living brass product or bronze, you need to have the matching hinges. You need to have all the matching accessories that go with it so that you're not having mixed metals in that space. And I know it's coming and we are so excited about the fact that you can offer that because not many people do. But it's no, a, it's yeah. a full solution that you're able to offer us as designers but the end consumer can then have the identical finish across everything that is in their wet areas and, and other spaces in the home and that is it's going to be a game changer because we've been asking for it for so long so you asked you listened we told you and you listened, and now you're doing it I think that's such a good point yeah that's really good because you don't want to compromise like if you're spending money on a quality sustainable product you want to be able to say, okay, the whole finished solution is covered. Now, don't get me wrong, we're still adding to it. It's not done yet. But there's things like heated tower rails that are coming out. Yes. With the same 20 finishes offered with the same 40-year warranty. Um, so we, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, what else can we do and how, how can we do it better than we've ever done before? So adding that yeah. solution but making sure that the, the, the client doesn't have to compromise on anything mm -hmm. that they do. So mm. being able to listen and pivot is, is good. And also not having the, the whole world as our, as our customers, for instance, focusing solely or heavily on the Australian market, it's not a bolt-on for us. It is, it is our bread and butter. So we, yeah. we listen and we, we try and create for, for the market that we serve. Mm. It's so beautiful. It's such a... Yeah, I mean, I just love working with the businesses that are Australian. You know, there's not just the tapware manufacturers, there's paint and all sorts of different things. It's just so um, beautiful to work with suppliers and manufacturers that are just so passionate about what they do when they're in Australia because I think people are asking for it more and more, this Australian made. Um, but, yeah, that's really lovely what you've mentioned just now. So I know that there's some elements of some of the componentry that's not Australian made. Can you just run through just for complete transparency for, you know, you're talking about all the brass componentry, it's all recycled and everything else, but where, where is it getting really tricky to get some of the things made in Australia? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that's a very good question. Now, valve cartridges inside of a mixer, for instance, um, the technology is not utilised in Australia yet for those high precision components like that. Yeah. Um, so we get our valve cartridges, for instance, from Germany and Italy only. Um, hosing under the bench, so things like flexible hosing. Um, that yes. Is, that's made in Germany, so that's the best hosing we can get. And all then all of the brassware we make, so we have focused on making brassware, and we get really great um, transparency and quality from the mm. uh, partners we use on those tip uh, components. And so they're... We, 
such a small component really of the overall t- I mean the big chunk of the the component is brass and that's what you're doing so it's just really exactly. small elements where we don't have the expertise in Australia that you're then getting from other quality manufacturers elsewhere yeah world-renowned manufacturers and we don't yeah. have the it's not viable yet in Australia but we always ask ourselves that question every time we have a quarterly meeting what else can we do and what else should we be doing by now so we always ask ourselves those questions what more can we bring in, not only for you know continuity of supply, but also for providing more of a robust story? But we we create all of our brassware, um, and then yeah, the valves as I mentioned. But unfortunately, at the moment, it's not viable to do in this country. Well, a lot of the time we don't have the machinery here that we need to make these things. So, and the machinery is not cheap. So it, it's <laughs> and like I said, it's a very small part. Definitely. of the overall tap when the finished tap so so how important is sustainability to Fawcett Stroman and being a sustainable company look I, I know that you know people can go onto the website and have a look at your story but just give, give us some high level you know what how important is it to you as a company yeah it is very important so we're a family business um as I mentioned this my father started the business and there's five of us brothers involved, um, two sisters as well on occasion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we we really wouldn't do anything that we wouldn't be happy with ourselves or we wouldn't be happy with seeing our families do or have. Um, mm-hmm. We're part of a very small community, um, wouldn't say remote, but it's rural Australia, northern Victoria. And we all know each other here. And the, the pulse or the vibe around this area is everyone knows everyone. And everyone knows everyone else is doing the right thing. So having that sort of um, community aspect to it means that you'd never do something that would harm anything else. And I believe that Mm -hmm. sort of a bit of a connection um, to country is that having that connection means that we think differently. Um, Obviously, a lot of people can, can think like this, and I believe it's the right way to think. But Having that connection, I believe, to the actual community makes us think different. Mm. And that is a big thing in um, rural anywhere, not just rural Victoria, but rural anywhere. There's a, a massive, strong connection to community. And the fact that you're, you know, creating a lot of employment in, in a, a regional area is, is brilliant as well. Just while we're touching on the sustainability, and I know we talked about it earlier anyway, talk, talk to us about the Plant a Tree program that you have because it's an awesome initiative. Yeah, so that's a brand new thing we've launched. Um, we very, we really want to make a bit of a difference here, and I think we can. Um, it's when you register your warranty. So the 40-year warranty, a bit of detail around that is you hop online, you get a card in the box, you scan the, co- the code, the QR code, takes you to our website. You fill in the details just with your name and where you bought it from so we can have that traceability, which we're big on. And then you can click a, a tick box that says you would like to plant a tree. And... We are gathering them up and then we'll do a, a sort of a group plan um, and we'll, we'll publish this on our socials and on our website. But we believe that, hey, if every tap sold or every batch of taps sold plants a tree, that's a huge difference. Um, and, yeah, we, we just love to think a little bit outside of the box. It's good. Oh, that's beautiful. So tell me, who's not going to tick the box to plant a tree? I know. <laughs> I was just saying, who wouldn't actually do that? You need to tick that? a box, Tim. Do they have to tick a box? Wouldn't you just do it? <laughs> we'll probably add that, yeah. No, but it's um, it's it's huge. We want to see what we want to analyze how many people do it, and see see what an impact we're making, and we can provide updates on that. It's going to be it's going to be gold, I think, because it's mm. I mean, it's carbon storage, but it's it's also just having a visible impact that say, hey, mm, you know, absolutely, everyone did this. It's not just us, yeah. Yeah. And so have you already earmarked where if it's going to be in the area where you are or are you going to because there's there's rural replantings and things like that. Yeah, so that's you see a, where, um, where the need is the most, I suppose, for more trees. Yeah, so the local councils um, have actually got a very good program out there um, where they've earmarked areas for revegetation. Yeah. And yeah. quite often it's roadside based or it's you know it creek side reserves, things like that. So we're going to work with councils to do it with us um, because we don't just want to, you know, plant a batch of trees where they're not needed, but just work work along with, you know, landowners, 
maybe traditional landowners councils to just mm. get that get the right balance but we, mm. we're definitely doing it yeah yeah it's a beautiful initiative I suppose just going that extra mile it's not only in your manufacturing and all the other stuff that we've been talking about it's just that beautiful add-on at the end you know complete your warranty and we'll go and plant a tree for every you know for, for, for the cards that are that are um, brought back so I suppose the end consumer is feeling involved in that as well it's it's a really really nice thing it's a yeah, lovely definitely. it's together it's not us it's together yeah. yeah exactly it is so in terms of um the sustainable products not only in terms of the manufacturing process but what specifically are you doing to produce sustainable products so the materials used in the in the production you've already talked to us about um, the e-brass, so the eco-brass. Um, so what other things are sustainable in, in the terms of the materials that you're using in the production? Yeah, so I think probably like obviously the brass you've touched on and how the plating's done, but then on more than that is the grease we use, for instance, in our valves, um, in our swivelling components is a vegetable-based extract. Wow. So it is used from you know, recycled old. From the old fish and chip shop down the <laughs> road. <laughs> I, I don't know how that's made, but that is made in Germany, that grease. And it is the best you can get. And it is a vegetable derived grease. Um, right. Extremely durable. It lasts forever, but it is, it's got its own story, which is great. Um, then there's obviously all of our packaging we use is recyclable. So once you get it, you can put everything in the recycle bin. Mm -hmm. um, including the, the plastics, but we are right now moving across to a brand new range of tapware or adding on a brand new range of tapware, which you'll probably see on our website soon. Um, Good. But that we, we, um, we're looking at that saying, okay, how can we make all of our packaging in this create or utilise no plastics at all, regardless? So we're working on a packaging structure for that range, which is going to be fully card paper-based. So it's all recycled componentry or cardboard. Um, so that's a really, really cool one for us. We get to yeah. That's so. There's just always on. initiatives going on. I mean, I loved it when we got the updated um, colours from you for the studio, and it's it's on a, a board, and you know you put in a a, pr a prepaid paid postage so that we could send the board back and the other components that, that were the old colours that we could send it back to you so that you could recycle it. I actually don't know anyone else that's doing that. I will always ask our reps, what are you doing with the old colours or the old materials? And if they say it's going in the skip, it's like you're not taking it, I will take it to the school, I will take it to the kinder, I will find a way to prevent this going to landfill. I won't let reps take anything unless I know it's being recycled. But I love the fact that you've already, you send us the new colours with the old colours, don't throw them away. Here's a prepaid pre paid postage thing so that we could send it back to you so you could recycle it so it's it's this this whole thinking about where's it all going even when it leaves your premises yeah so we're always trying to think next like on that particular point it's not only it's saving the brass and that's that's the big win um, yeah, so we can get to reuse reuse that brass and doesn't doesn't disappear in somebody's bin no. it's it's always got another life and it's always got another story to you know to tell mm. and and we just keep trying to to keep the loop going, keep all of the all of the materials in that loop, and try try mm. our hardest. So we always try that's and think all, that's next. Awesome. So, what renewable energy are you using in manufacturing? Yep. So currently, we have solar plant um, on our current factory where I'm at right now. Um, this was our initial plant, so we've got we utilise all of our solar panels here, um, and we use it runs our entire factory where I'm sitting. Um, mm -hmm. Our brand new factory, which is just down the road, which we sort of merging across to, um, it's probably 200 metres away, that has been designed at an architect level to have all of the roofs facing north. So it's got a skillion type structure. So yep. that can support, at its finished state, should be able to support 300 kilowatts of solar. It's a it's a huge um, That's a big, huge considering the average house would, you, would have six kilowatts on their roof. It is, it's going to be it's going to be good um, it's going to be a stage development but we have designed it from the ground up to be sustainable and having that north facing roof gives us optimum 
efficiency for catching mm. the sun. And being, I mean, being in Kerrang, most days in the year are sunny. So we may as well use it. It's Absolutely. Does it mean that the whole factory will be run off solar power? Exactly. We won't have to use the grid. Yeah, that's awesome. So we don't have to So wait. it's an off-grid factory. Sorry? It's an off-grid factory, the new one that you're... Yes. So we're yeah, trying to work incredible. with Power Coil and the others at the moment to try and um, create a battery-based system so we don't have to have that link to the grid. Mm. But um, always we need to have continuity of supply, so we've got to think of that side as well. And um, But, yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're going. And mm. sustainability is big. And if you've got a resource, you know, staring you in the face every day that can be utilised, Mm. Um, you may as well use it. And Kerrang is a massive producer of solar energy for the country at the moment. We've got massive um, solar farms around the town. So that sort of made us think as well, hey, why are we not doing it? Why are we not doing more? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer when it's going to save you truckloads of money, but it's also going to be much better for the environment. It's, yeah, exactly. It's so that's all. That's exciting. I, um, I bet we're really looking forward to that. Well, when it's done. Yeah, so stage one's done and producing, um, so that's really cool. But stage two and three are going to be where it gets very exciting. So we'll call you yeah, up that when it's done. Very exciting. That's awesome. So look, I think you've really captured the how you're manufacturing, the ethos of the whole business, and also what people should be looking for from in terms of you know tapware in Australia. But I suppose. It, should listeners be looking or what should listeners be looking for when they or asking for when they're choosing their tapware? Look, the clear one is Australian made. Uh, from what you're saying today, it really is. If, if you want quality, you want something that's as close to closed loop as it can be, the Australian manufacturers that are doing tapware are pretty good. Um, is it, you know, is there anything else that they should consider for their core brine criteria in terms of how do I know that this is a good one versus another one? Yeah, well, that's a good one. And, and it's a little bit hard maybe to tell first up, but actually touching and feeling the product can give you a good indication of the quality. Yeah, agree. So quality is king. So You can feel it, actually. You can, you can really feel it. Yeah, so that's a big one. Um, I, would, I would say look at the investment in the tapware and think about it over five years or 10 years or 20 years rather than what's my initial outlay going to be. Mm -hmm. So it may be a bigger investment to start with, but if you look at that over the life of the product, how long the warranty is or what the manufacturer will back it for over against what's it cost me today, um, that's a good way to look at it. That's the way I look at things when I purchase items um, because, you know, there's reinstall costs, there's throwing things away costs, right. rebuying, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. You can look at it a number of ways, but quality, touching and feeling the product, asking experts, I would, I would do, go into a showroom, ask a plumber, and then looking at the cost over over the years that you intend to utilise mm. that investment is is the best way I would, I would recommend. Uh, I think that that's very wise advice. And look, I know that if you just walk into a showroom, just on that one thing that you've talked about in terms of assessing the quality, the warranty is a very good indicator. But if you pick up two taps, because of the, 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 the amount of brass in one versus another, you can feel how solid it is. You don't even need to ask the question, really. You can just feel how much better the quality is by just the weight of the product because of the the amount of brass in it which is yeah and much it's heavier exactly and it's not brass for brass's sake it's making the product good so you don't have to buy two or three light versions yeah, exactly. <laughs> of the same product so um where can people find out more about um faucet stroman so also about your sustainability and what you're doing with your plant a tree program where can they find out more all right so i would suggest starting on the website it's being added to every day so we are adding in our news section um, on our environmental um, tab and i'll put i'll put the link in the show notes yep and then also check out our social so instagram's the biggest for us um, mm -hmm. check that out um, we are going to be publishing 
where we plant our trees, how many we do, what we do. So that's where that information is going to go as well. But yeah, socials and website, I reckon, would be a great place to start or give us a call. And where's the biggest, um, the easiest way for people to find your product? Because not all products are everywhere. So where are the best places for people to go to buy and, and to look at the um, Fawcett Stroman products? Yeah, okay. So what I would suggest is filling in the, the little box on the website called Find a Showroom. It's a tab. Yes. Um, that comes straight through to our sales team and we will respond quickly to that. Or you can give us a call. We partner with like-minded small retailers, not massive big box groups, but we partner with the smaller, more luxurious retail groups. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, so either, either give us a call or check out that showrooms tab. Yeah. And, look, I know some of the showrooms um, have got pretty much your whole range, all the different finishes, and it just depends how big the showrooms are. But that's great that people can... Um, go onto the website and be able to find a showroom so they can really touch and feel the product and compare it to others. Exactly. And, yeah, it's, it's all about solutions. So we may not have everything everywhere, but we'll try and have what's relevant to that local clientele in that showroom. We're expanding that every day just by the way. So keep checking in for updates if it's not in your area. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're very excited about what's coming uh, with what you're releasing soon. It was when we, I actually saw it on the socials myself and I said to the team, look what's coming, look what's coming with all the uh, matching componentry with the colour. It, it's not such a big deal with something like Chrome necessarily, but most of our clients now are moving away from Chrome. Even if they still don't want to use a colour per se, they'll be using, you know, nickel or, or a gunmetal type colour. But to get it then matching perfectly, you have to have it from the same manufacturer. So it's so exciting that all that componentry is going to be available for me. And the heated tower eyes was such a big one. So we're excited. So it's, it's an awesome thing for the for the consumers. Yeah, it is like really, really good. matching. And having it all based on that eco chrome, I mean on that sorry, yes. for brass, sorry, gives gives us that ability to offer the solution. It's not some stainless steel, some zinc, some brass. It's all based on the same substrate, mm, which gives us the same warranty. really good launching board to just add swaths of new products. That's really good. Yeah. Oh, Tim, it's been awesome chatting with you today. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'm sure that people are now going to be going out there really holding different taps and, and really asking the right questions to get a really good quality product, knowing that it's, yeah, sure, it can be replaced, but what's the, the impact of that? And not being able to get things fixed, what's the impact of that? And, yeah, it's investing up front to have a product that's really what's going to last a minimum of 40 years. Exactly. So knowledge is sustainability. So you've got the ability to ask the questions. Um, Correct. Yeah, learn, yeah. learn, ask the questions, and you'll make the right decision. Yeah, yeah. no, that, that's good advice. Thanks so much, Tim. It's been awesome chatting with you today. Loved it. Thank you. Bye for now. See ya. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of My Forever Home. If you're ready to renovate or build a new home and you need help to create a beautiful and functional forever home, you can book a chat with me directly at whitepebbleinteriors.com.au backslash chat. Have a great day.